shameful display! Okay, I realized that I forgot to switch my sound right. No, I wasn't muted. I, I forgot to switch my sound from two channels to one. Did you all catch shameful the shameful display? display? You know? Did we at least get the shameful, shameful display? display. <laughs> I was telling you all that me um, having to cancel the stream yesterday was a shameful display. Um, so it was kind of a funny thing. Like, I'd been using... It's been freezing cold. Like... I, may, many of you may have seen in the news like what's happening in Texas and other states where they're having this huge winter storm. Same thing's happening here. The only difference, and it's a big difference that I'm thankful for, is that we haven't lost our power here, unfortunately, like a lot of people have, and I hope they get it back soon because that is absolutely terrible. Um, but um, it's been freezing cold in the house, right? Because they don't build houses here with heaters that are meant to keep you warm at sub-zero temperatures. Um, they just don't build the houses here because it's extremely rare for that to happen. Fortunately, I have a propane fireplace, and it keeps the house pretty warm. But I've, to, I've been burning it for, like, literally a week straight. Um, it's been freezing cold in the house, but I've been doing my work because, you know, it's work from home. So I was, you know, doing my day job. We'd been asked to conserve power, so I hadn't been turning on my computer much. Um... You know, since I didn't want to kind of cheat while everybody's trying to conserve power and me be running my gaming computer and recording videos and all that other stuff. Um, so I didn't make videos for a couple days because of that. But then I was going to stream last night and the internet had been working fine all day. And as soon as I got ready to stream, I was like, you know, I should, I should test my internet. It wouldn't even load the website to do the speed test. And then when it finally did load, it got 0.5 megabytes or megabit per second. I was like, yeah... It's not going to work, and so it's like, that's really weird. So I canceled the stream, and I was kind of frustrated that I had to cancel the stream, and then I tested it again, you know, just to see if it was still doing it, and it worked just fine. So then I was like, well, I don't want to reschedule the stream <laughs> and then have it not work, and so I just put it off till today, and hopefully everything will be okay today. So, <laughs> yeah, it's true, though. Kuhaku, yeah, it's, uh, my, my computer is a lot more than 300 watt space heater. My graphics card alone, I think, is 320 or 30 watts. And then the processor's probably another 100 watt. Yeah. You get one of these new Intel 11th gen processors, apparently some of those are going to be like 200 something watt processors. <laughs> the only processor I've ever run that was 200 plus watts was that 16 core Threadripper. Still got it, but obviously I don't use it in my gaming machine. <laughs> yeah, no, my my PC is decent at warming up the room after I've been gaming for a while. Um, so anyway, hey, let's start things off. Uh, I wanted you all to see this replay. I did, um, this is actually from the Warhammer World Championship, and I put up a video earlier um, of a game where dwarves, I thought, played very well against Norska. And I talked a little bit about how, um, I've got the Air of Carthage thing over my face over there here. Let me, let me, uh, scoot myself out away from that a little. There we go. I'm not branding myself. Um, I talked a little bit about how dwarves, uh, shouldn't get bunched up when, you know, like the, the player in that one spread their troops out and put a lot of distance between the front line and his thunderers. And I wanted to show you all this replay yet. My graphics are on medium right now because I'm prepared to play with you all tonight. So, yeah, don't be expecting anything to look really good. Um, and I don't know what the deal is. Like, CA plea, like medium or ultra, you get a lot of this weird shadowing stuff on dwarf infantry. So, maybe in Warhammer 3? Or maybe it's a feature. I don't know. Um, anyway, this dwarf player does not put near as much spacing between his thunderers and his main line. And I want you all to see what happens here. Not only that, I feel like that the high elf player does a good job of kind of like spreading out, but you see you got four Thunderers, Trollhammer, Torpedo, Oregon Gun, and let's just kind of watch what happens. And again, there's a lot of money spent on Iron Breakers instead of cheaper infantry and then having Slayers in the back. And I, I just want you all to see what the difference is when the Dwarves don't use that type of thing to their advantage. See this? The Chariots get through. There's no Rune Lord to slow them down. Thunderers get one shot, and then that's it. It's over. Lion Chariots are all over them. 
And then up here in the front, see how close the guns are to the front line? Eagle, dive bomb, dragon princes, boom. No slayers, bam. Illyrian Reavers chew up the cannons. And um, I, I think I wanted to kind of show this to you all just to kind of juxtapose what you saw earlier, which does come with risk. It may not work every time, but when you're going to play this defensive geometry, sometimes you need to spread out and give your ranged units um, an area of opportunity to do the damage that they need to do. So in this case, I think it's a great example of the dwarves had some units they needed damage, but they didn't give themselves the appropriate distance to pull it off. So yeah, they just end up getting shrecked by the uh, the high elves here. What's going on, Warner? Pilgrim? Saban, thanks for joining. Aaron? Stormrunner, thanks for being here tonight. Trantor, good to see you. Survivor? Thanks for being here. Warner and uh, Survivor, thanks for moderating here and over on the Discord as well. Appreciate it very much. Jordan the Straw, thanks for being here too. Yeah, this is um, this is a little bit... Like, and this is not me being mean to this player, right? I make mistakes too, and I could easily make this type of mistake. Um, but this is how not to dwarf in this case. So the High Elves just end up totally trouncing the dwarves here. Iron Breakers are an interesting one. What do you all think of Iron Breakers? Like, I'm, I'm not sure that I would ever, like, I feel like they're a very risky pick because dwarf infantry is so fickle. Like, I almost just want more of them for cheap rather than getting really quality ones. There's occasion where a quality one makes a difference and Iron Breakers, I think, could be really good against a really low armor faction who's not so great at armor piercing. But Iron Breakers against High Elves, to me, seems like a really unnecessary risk. I'm just kind of curious what you all think about Iron Breakers against High Elves. Like, I just... You've got Sword Masters, you got White Lions, you got Star Dragons. you got all kinds of stuff. Chariots. I just don't... I don't, I don't see Iron Breakers ever paying off against the High Elves. Unless you just got really lucky and the High Elves brought, like, nothing but Spearmen. But if they brought nothing but spearmen, doesn't that indicate that they would probably have chariots and monsters against which the Iron Breakers would be near useless? Again, I think there's an appropriate time for Iron Breakers. Like, a, there's a good place for them, but I just I don't see it in that fight. Yeah, no organ guns. I kind of agree. I, I wouldn't want the organ guns there either. Versus Beastmen uh, is their best matchup. That makes sense, Stormrunner. Beastmen only have a Bestigor. Uh, they do have chariots and stuff, but beastmen do have some other things that would be a little dangerous, but beastmen infantry outside of a Vestigor would certainly get owned by Iron Breakers. Mad when he says if you eat 40,000 bananas in 10 minutes you'll die from radiation poisoning. Either that or just die from a burst intestinal tract. Gyro Dwarf Warriors. Thunders, Rangers, Longbeards, yeah, see, I think Longbeards would be the most expensive infantry I'd want to bring against the High Elves. And Longbeards, in my opinion, would be the best in a front line against, like, Spearmen. Because High Elf Spearmen are going to be absolutely terrible against Longbeards. And then Longbeards are immune to psychology, so then it also makes it really worthless if the High Elves are trying to get any terror routes going with, like, a dragon or anything else like that. Chariots are obviously one of your biggest threats, and the High Elves... They could take a fat dump on you with nobles on a chariot, mages on chariots, lion chariots, Athelmar chariots. <laughs> they can uh, they can bring in the uh, Tyrannoch chariots. Yeah, I mean, the, the High Elves have some tools that make dwarves want to cringe. So... And, and I also feel like White Lions, that's like the one time that they might shine in a fight against Dwarf Infantry. Because White Lions, for the most part, are terrible. <laughs> yeah, they're just... They're not good, for the most part. But, anyway. Thought I'd show you all that one. Let's do some battles tonight. You know what? Let's start off with an FFA. And, um... Let's see. As we do an FFA... I'm gonna go... So, first of all, before you join any battles, go into your options right here in Warhammer 2. Graphics... 
click this drop down and pick medium before you jump in. If it's already on low, that's fine, but make sure it's on medium or low, but medium is okay. That helps us not lag when we're having these bigger team battles, so please do that. And then um, let's go ahead and go host one here, shall we? I think we will. Um, the battle is, uh, Air's battle and the password is one, by the way. We're going to do an FFA to start with. And, wait, I have the Crova Slaughter, Temple, Moonlight. Do some Moonlight Ridge. First stream I can make, too. Thanks for being here, Rune Leader. <laughs> just finished my physics exam. How did it go? Good? I hope it went good. I took my fair share of physics exams back in the day. <laughs> or, I guess, equivalent to physics exams, because I had to take, of course, physics one and two in college, um, like Newtonian physics, and then the, whatever the other one is, Gaussian physics, the stuff that deals more with, like, electromagnetism. And then, of course, basically every class I had from there on out was some form of a physics class in one way or the other, right? Like mechanics and materials, thermal systems design, um, fluid mechanics, composite materials, like all the classes I took were just like a bunch of physics stuff. Physics 201 was the first class I failed in my life. Physics, physics 2... It was definitely harder for me, at least, than the Newtonian physics. Like, the Newtonian physics kind of made sense. And uh, it was a little easier for my brain to grasp. The electronic stuff was definitely a lot harder for me. I have a degree in physics. I like physics. Yeah, it's it's interesting stuff. There is definitely plenty of interesting stuff. Did I ever take philosophy? Uh, it's like Philosophy may have been like one of the few classes in college that I didn't take. I feel like I, I went to school to be a mechanical engineer. And I feel like that for the first two, almost three years, I didn't take anything that had anything to do with engineering. <laughs> and then it's like finally in my last couple of years of school, I get to take engineering classes. So I'm kind of surprised I didn't have a philosophy class because I think I had to go to like two different sociology classes, a psychology class. Like, I mean, I had all these different classes, like multiple history classes, several composition classes. Like, I had to go to all these different classes. It's like, I just really wanted to be in some engineering classes, <laughs> and I finally got to, like, my last two years of school. They were hard as crap, but my last two years of school were the most enjoyable because it was just, like, on topic for the stuff that I wanted to learn. Wolf Game says, I liked chemistry. I hated chemistry. I called chemistry witchcraft. Like, I absolutely couldn't stand chemistry. It drove me nuts. They kept telling me I was going to have to take a second chemistry class, but I talked the school into being okay with me having just chem, like chem 106 or whatever it was I took, and then um, a biology class. They let it count. So I got out of having to take a second chemistry class, and I was very, very happy about it. I do not like chemistry. I don't know why I don't like chemistry, but I don't.
Getting an army put together. Let's see what we can do. Alright. Look, I'm there. CD Bobo, thanks for subscribing. Appreciate you being here tonight. Let's see. Calvin says, Do you have any possible reasons I cannot see your game lobby in the multiplayer battle? Um, I've heard people say that before. It could be to do with Steam region. I'm on the, on the Dallas server in the US. So. And then Stephen Wise, thanks for subscribing also. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being here tonight as well. Um, yeah, so it could be because you're not in the right Steam region. Sometimes, like, I've, I've had it, that happen to people, and, like, we've just had to have a friend help add people in, but you might check the Steam region. I'm going to turn on unit caps, actually. <laughs> Forgot to turn on unit caps. Alright, so we got Storm Runner, Bat Senshi, and Short Ended Straw. Let's see. I don't mind the idea, Wolf, of having some classes that kind of help round out a bit of education, but like, I felt like I probably had. I mean, a solid two years, at least, of classes that literally had nothing to do with my major. So again, I'm okay with rounding out a little, but when school costs what it does, like to go to, to college, that is, and, you know, I'm working a part-time job, trying to pay for my apartment, and I'm paying for my third sociology class, I'm getting a little pissed off, <laughs> you know, when that's the case, because I gotta go buy a $150 book, I gotta pay who knows what for tuition, right? And working at night while I'm trying to do homework and all this other stuff. So yeah, it started to get on my nerves. Like it started to really get on my nerves. Um, so like I said, a few classes here and there I wouldn't mind. I'll tell you one of the things that actually bugged me the most looking back on it, right? With hindsight, because hindsight is always helpful. Um, the education system that I went to, you know, like my grade school and stuff, it was, I mean, it was a small town, so it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't bad, like, especially considering a small town. I had a few teachers who, really good, really engaged, uh, like a world history teacher that I really remember, a couple science teachers, math teacher that did a really good job. And um, were it not for them, you know, <laughs> I probably would have been miserably unprepared um, to get into college. But, like, I started to realize that High school, like, at least in my opinion, this is just a thought I had. I don't know if any place does this, but I feel like high school should have two tracks. You should come in your freshman year of high school, and you should be going through some courses that kind of teach you all about your options for when you get out of high school. It's like, you should be learning about vocational job skills as one option, and you should be learning about higher education as the other option. Because the honest truth is, is, not everybody in a country or anywhere is going to be able to go to college and have it make sense, right? There's only so many jobs that require a college degree, and then there's a bunch of other jobs that require other type of training, and they're very important. Like, for instance, a carpenter doesn't need to go to college, but we darn well need carpenters in society, and so on, right? And so I feel like that the high school here, their biggest failing is they're not really preparing you for the real world. You're going in, you're learning some good stuff, like you're learning some math, science, composition, stuff like that. Like, none, none of it's like bad things to know. But then, like when I was in high school, you know what? They, they never taught us how to balance a checkbook. They never taught us about how to get a mortgage. They never taught us about how to open a bank account. They never taught you like a million things that you need to know about life. They didn't teach you how to cook. They didn't teach you how to do squat. <laughs> like all of that, you know, it's like, so I sit there and think about it, it's like, it was worthless, and so my suggestion about how we could redo some of the school stuff is I think kids should come into high school, get educated on their options, and then they should pick. Like, am I going down this higher education track, or am I going on this vocational track? 
and they pick early in high school. And then if you're on, say, like, for instance, the vocational track, you're going to spend um, your last couple of years of high school, like part of the time at least, like, let's say you want to be an electric electrician, you're going to spend part of your last two years apprenticing, you know, some real electricians, like actually gaining skills and being ready to get out of high school and go make some money because you need to. And um, if you're going to the higher education track, obviously it would focus a lot more on classes that are going to actually be up to snuff. Because, like, for instance, I got out of my high school, and again, my teachers did a good job with what they had. They really did. I don't have a lot to complain about. But, I mean, my college math classes were way above where I left off in high school. Like, the high school classes weren't even really a good preparation. Like, I just had to, to learn a whole bunch whenever I was getting into college. And uh, because my... My high school class was woefully inadequate, you know, to get me ready for, you know, college calculus or something like that. So, all I'm saying is, like, I think it'd be cool if they varied it up a little. Let the students make some choices. Have it focus on getting them ready for real life. You know what I mean? Be all about getting them ready for real life. Well, so someone made a comment here that said the U.S. has a bunch of people who have a college degree and they're sitting in a job that they're overqualified for. That is going to happen occasionally. Um, you know, because there's never going to be like a perfect balance of people who went and got a certain skill and then, you know, the jobs perfectly exist, fit, you know, the skills that people have. That'll never happen. Um, but at the same time, I do feel like too many kids get encouraged to go to college just, you know, because you got to go to college. And, you know, sometimes you do. Uh, sorry, I'm plugging in my headset. Sometimes people do need to go to college. and uh, But if you go to college and you don't have a plan for how you're going to use your degree and how you're going to make money and how you're going to pay for it, you can end up in a bad situation. I've got a couple of friends. They've got, you know, over $100,000 in college debt and they can't pay it. And... You know, I, I've heard all the stories. Some people are like, well, that's their fault. They shouldn't have done that. And, you know, or, you know, the government should help them. Like, and I, I hear all those stories. I'm not here to argue about that stuff. Whatever the case is, for me, the bigger problem is, like, I feel like that kids, kids don't get told properly, like, what the ups and downs are and, like, given some really solid advice sometimes on what they should be looking to accomplish with their college degree. Anyway, that's just my opinion. College is fantastic. I'm so glad I went. Um, it, it got me a mechanical engineering degree, which, you know, I'd planned to use to, uh, to get a good career. It worked. Um, there was plenty of opportunities for me to get a good career, mechanical engineering degree. And uh, everything worked out great, you know? Worked out good for me. But, you know, it just depends. So make sure you're making the right decisions. Take time to think about it. That's all I'm saying. Twilight, with pleasure. Hunting my foes. Make good decisions. Sometimes life will still throw you a curveball, but <laughs> make a good decision and you'll have a better chance than if you made a bad decision. Seizing the position. Waiting orders to battle! Bowman, ready! It shall be done. Kill them! Armed and ready! For Ariel! Armed and ready! Now! Alright, let's see. Guard against Dark!
for Eldrazor! Bunch of stuff probably going on all over the map, and I can't pay attention to all of it at once. I'm trying to kill off a few of these cavalry. Having some issues with the fire at will, of course. Back here, so finish the off. Kill the. Kind of keep shooting these things. Of End them in dawn's name. Do these cold one nights. Not exactly the way I'd hoped to use my blade singers, but End at least they're getting some use. Get rid of this Hydra. If I don't, I'm gonna regret it. Look at it. You went like crazy. Uh, I can't afford to chase this thing to eternity right now. And here. Some more Still got some blade singers in there. Queen Ariel. Those angry ladies. Well, these repeater crossbows have been a thorn in my side the entire battle. Alright, let's see if we can do something about them. Writers. Okay. Quickly now, at once. Pull them back around here. Yes. That stinking Hydra, look how many hit points it has now. Don't bird my blade blade singers. They're singing such lovely songs. All right, let's see if we can get rid of this Hydra. Got a few more singers that came back from routing over here. Is that Hydra dodging me? He's dodging me. I got a bunch of ammo left with um, sisters. I'm gonna have to try and make good use of. What am I up against? See what the fight looks like. I haven't gotten a look at the fight over here. All right, so Storm Stormrunner left again. Okay, so Stormrunner was the one fighting me. All right, we got rid of those units, and the short-ended straw has a bunch of points, so we need to overcome the difference. Alright, Ariel up here. Got a few units that regrouped. Get a little 
structure put together. Alright. Go find some victims. Go ahead and run our cavalry ahead. Some dryads here too. Cavalry! Queen Ariel! Warriors of Ariel! Through the skies! I don't know what is happening with this. So pull it up. Alright, where's the appropriate target? Should we shoot Gorbel? Isn't it a sin to shoot Gorbel? Forgive me, Gorbel, for I have sinned. I'll shoot Gorich, though, if it makes you feel any better. Oh, you filthy tree. See that? Tree got in my way. Must survive. Must kill Stab Skaven. to the sisters. I got praise Sigmar to upgrade your GPU to RTX 3080. I don't need a 3080. Um, not really sure where that comment came from. Maybe it was part of another conversation, but if you have noticed that the graphics are turned down low, it's because we do that during the stream just to make sure we don't get lag. But, yeah. I can definitely run the game at a higher graphics level than where we're at. I actually have a, my graphics card's better than a 3080 in my opinion, but I guess it depends on opinion. I got a 6900 XT, it's a beast. How much is the 3080 going for? Must be expensive. Yeah, um, depends on whether, well, even if you buy it from a retailer, it's, the 3080 is near impossible to find because it's the one that's kind of a really good deal if you could get it at MSRP, which you can't. But even slightly above MSRP, it's a decent deal compared to last generation and everybody wants it and then that's the one that the miners want the most and so... You can't hardly find them anywhere. They're extremely expensive. They're, they're closer to $1,000 now. The MSRP on them was like $700. And then the the aftermarket cards that come from the AIB partners were probably like $800-ish, $800 800-something. But now they're closer to 1000 at the MSRP. And then if you're on eBay or something, they cost more than that if someone's scalping them. Uh, the 6900 like... So it depends, right? The AMD cards, if you're gonna stick to like 1080p or 1440, the AMD cards, oh, and, and ray tracing is not a goal, right? So let, let's say you're like me. You play games at 1440p and you're not interested in ray tracing and you're not interested in DLSS, um, which is me because I'm not gonna play any games at 4K Ray tracing isn't in any of the games that I'm interested in, and I don't play a single game that even offers ray tracing, and none of the games I play use DLSS. So NVIDIA is of very little interest to me right now because that's like their main pitch. And if you have games that that makes sense for, so let's say you're playing Cyberpunk, or you're playing these other games where maybe you feel like the ray tracing makes a difference and you really want it, then NVIDIA would be the better choice for that. Because hands down, the 3080 and the 3090 will ray trace better than um, the AMD cards. But the AMD cards shine at 1080p and 4K, whereas the NVIDIA cards are usually a hair more powerful when you get up to 4K. But um, hardly anybody games at 4K because it costs too much. 
Very, very expensive. Wow, Gorich was owning. So was this um, Warlock Master. Holy cow, man. They did some work. Yeah, so it kind of depends on what you want with the graphics card. That, that's assuming you could actually find these things and purchase them at a reasonable price, which you can't. <laughs> but playing along for a minute, assuming you can find these things and purchase them for a reasonable price, that's the decision matrix you should be considering in your head. So NVIDIA, if you think that their features are good. Now, here's here's my take on it personally. This is just my take, okay? Don't have to, you don't have to take my word for it, because it's all up to you. Personally, I think ray tracing is a stupid gimmick. Like, I, I've seen ray tracing in a bunch of games. I've seen it in person. I've seen it in videos. It doesn't look anything special. Like, it's just not very interesting. It's like, basically, I, I feel like a game built well looks just about as good, except that it doesn't have to go through all the heavy compute of all those ray tracing. And, like, I don't see the point. Like, it's never going to get easier to do all that computation for ray tracing. Your parts might get more powerful, but then it's kind of like we're hitting the reset button on frame rates. So we're going to take our frame rates way back down, and then we're going to have to work our way back up again over years just to have a reflection on my gun or a reflection in the mud puddle on the ground. Like, it doesn't add anything to the game. Like, it's not very interesting to me. So I think ray tracing's stupid. I think it's a gimmick. I think it's something that NVIDIA is pushing just to try and have something new. Again, this is my own hot take on it. You don't have to agree with me. It's fine if you don't. DLSS, on the other hand, is probably a fairly useful tool. Here's the only problem with DLSS in my mind. It's very limited in which games it's been implemented. DLSS is basically, for you don't, those of you who don't know it, NVIDIA has like an AI technology that can basically take a lower resolution picture and make it look higher resolution using AI. And that's what DLSS is. And when you turn it on, it basically helps you get a lot higher frame rates. And it's actually a really helpful tool for gamers versus ray tracing, which is a really useless tool for gamers, in my opinion, right? And so I could see NVIDIA pushing DLSS. And if they can get, like, for instance, if Total War started using DLSS and it boosted frame rates by like 40%, you're dang right I'd be interested in having an NVIDIA card to make Total War run better. Um, so to me, that's NVIDIA's argument. Should be around DLSS. Ray tracing is stupid at this point. Maybe three years from now, it won't be. But whatever I'm seeing right now for ray tracing is pointless. It's absolutely pointless. So anyway, that's my opinion. Be it for what it's worth. Um, multiplayer. Host battle. Airs battle. Passwords won. How about, let's do something different here. How about four of you all join this one? And uh, I'm going to join it as a spectator, actually. Okay, I'll watch this one so that I can catch more of the battle for everybody watching. So I'm going to do multiplayer battle, host battle, host game as spectator. Yeah, see, Zaven, if what you're saying is true and eventually it makes developing games easier, then so be it. But right now, um, I don't understand how it makes games easier. Like, I just, I don't understand it. I don't program games though, so there may be some logical reason, but I haven't seen any game that's implemented ray tracing where for me as a player, it offers any benefit. You know what I mean? All it does is kill your frame rates so that I can see my reflection accurately in a mud puddle. Like that is that is useless. It's beyond useless for a player, especially like Battlefield 5 or whatever was the first game where they showed it off. And um, this work, can you all join this game? Come join it. Game's up. There's battle, passwords won. Um, in any case, um, like a shooter game, like Battlefield 5, we added ray tracing. And what does it do? Well, it kills the frame rates. Who wants to play a shooter game at like lethargic frame rates? That's terrible. Like it's an awful idea. They put ray tracing in Fortnite. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> like anybody who's serious about playing Fortnite competitively is never going to use ray tracing. Uh, they put it in Minecraft. Okay, it's kind of weird to like take a game that's built off of the graphics intentionally being bad and trying to make them good. Now, I've seen it in Minecraft. It looks kind of interesting. Would I play it like that? Yeah, possibly. But then you have to have like a 2080 Ti to run Minecraft. So, you know, again, like it's it's the hit to frame rate. So maybe one day if ray tracing actually does something useful, sure, I'll buy into it. But NVIDIA having sold 20 series cards and even these 30 series cards telling people that ray tracing is the thing, they're full of it. It's not a thing yet. It's just not. It's not a thing yet. Maybe it will be. 
but it's definitely not a thing yet. Now, that being said, I'm not bashing on NVIDIA. 30 series graphics cards are excellent graphics cards. Period. That's all there is to it. I chose to get an AMD card because I thought it fit me better. But, I mean, like I said, I'm not trashing on their products. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Is no one going to join this? We got two open slots here. There we go. There we go. All right, now we're getting set. Anyway, that's just my my take. Um, one other thing I could give you all some advice on while I'm waiting on these folks to choose their armies. Um, processors. Like, when it comes to processors, you're going to hear a lot about people saying, well, oh, AMD is now the best at gaming, and then maybe Intel is going to be back again. They were the best at gaming. Like, here's the thing with gaming and processors. Like, first of all, most games don't use the processor very heavily. There's a few that do. Um, and honestly, like, if, if you're playing at 1080p, and let's say that you took an immensely powerful graphics card, like a 3090, and you paired it with, say, like uh, an AMD Ryzen 3600, you would probably be leaving some frames on the table in like a, at a game that can run at really high frame rates at 1080p. If you take that same combination and I want to play at 4K, that Ryzen 3600 is going to be just as good as a 10900K or a Ryzen 5900 50X, you know, like the 16 core processor. It won't it won't make a difference in most games, right? When you're playing at 4K, so the higher your resolution goes, the less your processor matters because all the work is going to be done by the processor. <laughs> the lower your resolution is, the more work gets done by the processor, but even there it's like there comes a point at which you have to have a better graphics card for it to really make a difference on your processor. So just saying this so that you all will think about that. Because I, I see a lot of people thinking, oh, if I'm going to buy a gaming computer, I have to have like an i7 or I have to have, you know, like a Ryzen 9 or an i9. All this stuff. You, you don't. And typically they really don't make a lot of difference in a game. And then, like I said, it is a little bit game dependent. There are some very new games that'll come out and they'll do a really good job of using like all eight CPU cores or something like that. And if that's the case, like if games keep moving that direction, which they very well could, then at some point, yeah, it may have been a good idea to get a processor with like a whole bunch of cores. But otherwise, most games just don't do that. And like resolution has a lot to do with it. Resolution has a lot to do with it. Like, for instance, if you're going to build a gaming computer for 4K, don't get obsessed about the processor you're going to put in it, because it just won't make a big difference. If you're going to go be a competitive esports gamer and you need to have, like, 300 frames per second, just make sure your processor is really fast. And that's, and, like, get the best graphics card you can get, right? You don't have to have a ton of cores. So, yeah, just don't don't get obsessed with stuff like that if you go computer building or if you're out looking to buy a gaming computer or something like that. What I would always say is don't overspend on your processor and then put that money into a better graphics card. Don't overspend on your motherboard and your processor and then put that saved money into a better graphics card. Does the lobby have a name? Yeah, it's called Airs uh, Battle. And the password is 1. Warhammer 3 is supposed to be different enough for a new game, or is it going to be a new campaign and some new characters? Warhammer 3 is going to obviously have some new factions, new characters, um, new units, stuff like that. But like, like Warhammer 2, it's going to carry the content from Warhammer 1 and 2 eventually into Game 3, into one massive campaign. It won't be there, I don't think, at launch, based on what we've heard from Creative Assembly... I think it's going to be like Warhammer 2, where they launched the Warhammer 2 Vortex campaign and then added Mortal Empires. I think that's what we're going to see with Game 3. But um, that is what we should expect for Warhammer 3, is it's going to come in with its own new content, and then if you own Game 1 and 2 or their DLCs, it gets pulled forward into Game 3. 
That's a good question. So Zavin says, what's my opinion on M.2 SSD versus other SSD and HDD? Um, here's what I would say about those just from my experience, right? I'm not, a, I'm not great with these from a real technical standpoint, but I have a SATA SSD, which is, you know, the one that uses the SATA plug, and I also have an M.2 SSD in my computer right now. When I'm playing games, I can't tell any difference in game loading speed between the SATA and the M.2. So what I would say with those is if the M.2 goes on sale and you can get it for roughly the same price as the SATA, then get the M.2. Um, if, if the SATA is cheaper, just get the SATA drive. You're not missing much. Um, as far as an HDD, like the old spinning drives, I still have one of those in my computer too. And I'm fortunate to be in a position where I have enough money that I can put all of my games on a solid state drive. But let's be honest, some games are probably a waste to put on a solid state drive, especially if they're old games you don't play as much. Having a hard drive is great for storing pictures, videos, old games, all that kind of stuff. So I would, I would usually recommend you get like a one terabyte spinning drive if you can afford it and just keep it for like extra storage. And then I would put your operating system and your favorite games on just an SSD. Keelan says, why has your sub count been at 257K for ages? Keelan, <laughs> that is a fantastic question. I actually asked YouTube that same thing and um, I'll explain what happens to you all. So my sub count, went up nice and steady for years and years and years. Um, like, I would say on a fairly average month, I'd probably get like 1,500 subs. On higher months, it'd be like three or 4,000. And then all of a sudden, like a year ago, it just tanked, like tanked. And now I actually get negative subs by just a little bit, like probably minus 200 subs every month. And I went and looked at the statistics I'm still gaining like 3,500 or 3,600 subscribers a month, but I'm losing that many as well. And I asked YouTube, I'm like, can you give me some details? Like what's happening here? Like where are these deleted accounts? Like, can you show me? And they just won't, they won't give me any details. I asked them, can you check to see if something's wrong? Like, it's really weird. This isn't happening to anybody else in the total war community. It's only happening to me. Like, and I told them, I was like, my account's very old. I've been making videos for 12 years. Like, are you just deleting inactive accounts? And they're like, well, we do that occasionally. And I was like, well, is that what's happening? Can you show me how many? And they just won't, they won't answer me. They won't give me any details. They won't explain it. They just tell me some stupid frequently asked question type answer to it. All right, anyway, let's check it out. So yeah, I don't know why it's stuck there. I, I have no idea what they're doing. The algorithm absolutely hates me right now. Like it hates me. They will not recommend my stuff anywhere. And it's and when I asked YouTube about that, I was like, how come I'm not getting as many video recommendations as I used to? They basically sent me some frequently asked questions type answer. It was basically saying, just make your thumbnails and your titles more clickbaity. And that was pretty much their answer. Just just make your stuff be more clickbaity and we'll recommend it more. And I'm like, yeah, well, screw you. <laughs> like I don't I don't do clickbait. <laughs> I just do battles, like I just play games. So that's all there is to it. So if the algorithm's gonna hate me, I, I, I could care less. Like I'm not changing how I run my channel just to make YouTube's algorithm be happy. Screw them. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, so I got two Terrorgeist here, uh, the Chillgeist, Mortis Engine, let's see, Variks Reavers, okay, what do we got? Manfred, White King, Just get political and YouTube will bless you with all the subs. Yeah, <laughs> maybe so. Well, that's what I wondered for a while. I wondered, like, did they somehow maybe get confused? Like, do they see, like, Warhammer type stuff, like death and battle and all this stuff? And, and do they think my channel's bad? I was asking him basically, like, is, is my channel considered something bad? And they're like, oh, no, everything's fine. Oh, my gosh. That foot. That was beautiful. Cyan Inferno, that was awesome. Uh, in any case, yeah, uh, I asked him that. I was like, did something happen? Like, what? Again, they won't answer. YouTube is is very useless. Like, even with me having a quarter million subs, they are useless. Like, they, I cannot get any like one-on-one -on -one talk on the phone, for instance, with someone. Like, they are very difficult to work with. Over the course of my channel, I have made them a lot of revenue. 
And you would think that that might, you know, at least have them be willing to engage with me. It, it, they're very difficult to get a hold of and talk to other than an email. And then when you do, basically their person just copies and pastes the frequently asked questions into the email and just says, there you go, that's what you get. <laughs> See, we got a Lariel here, some Lothar and Seagar. Ooh, little breathy breath attack here. The Sun Dragon. Boy, man, High Elves are... They're gonna get dumped on here. They don't got anything to stop that Greenskin invasion there. Holy Pilgrim, thanks for the five. Uh, he says, Political President Gorbel. <laughs> Gorbel is definitely going to win in 2024, Pilgrim. I don't even know what people's problem is. Like, I don't understand why you have a problem with the Destroy All Humans platform that Gorbel has been pushing for years. Oh my, Wind of Death from Manfred. That was beautiful. Woo, Griffin. Going off with the Wind of Death. Manfred ripping a big greasy fart right across the greenskins. Thanks, Pilgrim. Appreciate the support, man. I'm looking forward to playing Vermintide with you all. I'm thinking maybe I'll stream Vermintide next week on Thursday. So I'll have to get with you all sometime between now and then and try and learn how to play a little. Carl Franz for Secretary of Consent. <laughs> I love it. Carl would be an excellent Secretary of Consent. Oh, jeez. I've always thought it'd be really funny if someone who had the talent for it and you got, like, a few voice actors to, like, make a video during campaign season just to get everybody's minds off of real politics because real politics is just painful. Um, but to, um, to have a video where it's, like, all the different Warhammer characters and people could do voiceovers and, like, have a debate and just come up with some, like, really hilarious lines and stuff. Like, I... Oh, man, that would be great. Ooh, another brutal winds of death there for Manfred. Bit over 104 kills. Ooh. Soul of Damnation. Just got KO'd by the Terror guys, but they better get away from these uh, Chaos Warriors with Halberds. Chillgeist. Oh, they're going to shred these knights with lances. X-Wraiths just absolutely eat this kind of stuff alive. Have you considered using alternative site like BitChute? Um, honestly, I, I if anything, like, the only thing I have considered, like, obviously I'm never going to stop making videos on YouTube. Like, it doesn't matter if YouTube's algorithm hates me or whatever, right? I don't, I don't care. You, you all watch the videos still, so I'm going to make the videos still. I started YouTube never expecting to make money. And if my views are lower and I'm making less money, who cares? Like, that's more money than I ever expected to make when I started. And, and I didn't start it for money, right? So I have the benefit of having an, a good full-time job. I don't need to make money off of YouTube. It's a nice side effect if it happens. And I make the videos because I enjoy it and because you all enjoy it. And if I forget that... I'm gonna stop enjoying making videos and then it's gonna ruin everything, right? So I'm trying to keep my myself and my, my mental mindset in that, right? Which is just have fun, just make videos. You know, screw the algorithm, screw the views, all that other stuff, just have fun and make videos. If I start getting obsessed with like metrics and stuff, it's gonna make it miserable to make videos and then I'll hate it and then I will have ruined something that I love. So in any case, I have thought about doing like Twitch. Um, I do my streams here for now, just because it's where my channel's at, but I have thought about streaming on Twitch, because Twitch is just a lot more conducive to, like, long, long-style gameplay. YouTube punishes you a lot for making stuff like campaign videos, because it'll be a long video where the average view duration is not anywhere near the length of the video, and their algorithm hates that. And if the campaign doesn't get as many views as a battle video, the algorithm hates that. They, they punish you for uploading content that's different, basically. Whereas on Twitch, like, people come to Twitch and they expect for a streamer to be on playing a game for hours on end, right? That, that's what Twitch's platform is. But where Twitch sucks is their video playback is limited. It's not as good as YouTube. 
stuff like that, right? And so I'd love to combine the two worlds. Like, I'd love to start doing more streaming and playing that out on Twitch where it's more appropriate. And then taking highlights to make highlight videos for YouTube, but then also just continuing a few traditional YouTube video sets like online battles, just keep doing those on YouTube. And then probably having like one campaign at a time just on YouTube, that's not a live stream, right? Because I can also understand why people don't want to come on YouTube and watch like live stream replays. They're not very exciting because you have a lot of stuff in between. Oh, look at this, boy. We've got the uh, the aerial battle for the ages here. Manfred going against Sun Dragon, Alariel the Radiant. She did get the heal off in here, which is gonna help a lot, but I'm pretty sure the Terror Geist and Manfred are gonna shred this one up eventually. Man, that, that does so much healing. So much healing. Oh man, that burning head over here. Sigvald the Magnificent. Who dropped that burning head? I didn't catch that. Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not in any big hurry on it. Like, I'm obviously, like I said, I'm not going to stop making YouTube videos. So I, because I mentioned, like, I had a suggestion thing up on YouTube the other day where I was asking people for input. And when I mentioned using Twitch, everybody freaked out. Like, oh, he's leaving YouTube. No, I'm not leaving YouTube. I, I'm not planning on leaving YouTube. I'm not planning on stopping making, like, battle videos and stuff like this. None of that's going to happen. When I was making that mention the other day, it was really just me saying that um, I'd like to try something that kind of fits the type of video that I'm making better. Like I said, YouTube kind of punishes me for making long-form content, whereas Twitch does not, right? And so it's like, I feel like my long-form content would fit better on Twitch, but then maybe bring highlights of that back over to YouTube for people who can't join in on the streams. And then continuing to do um, like battle videos and like one campaign at a time on YouTube in that form that people, you know, and so then the videos keep coming on YouTube, but we also get to have the Twitch environment. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking. Again, don't know if I'm gonna do it yet. I'm still thinking through it, thinking through the options. For now, I'm just going to keep streaming here on YouTube and making videos. Because the type of content um, that I really enjoy making, see, Cyan Inferno is in the lead. The vampires are in a really good position to survive to the end, potentially. These halberds and stuff with Sigvald still alive over here, so Chaos, I think, is in a pretty decent position, too, potentially. I don't know if Cyan Inferno, he's got a lot of points, but can he stay ahead, I guess, is the question. We're getting a little lag right now. There it goes. Um, you'll love Vermintide too. Who do you want to play as first? I don't know who I'm going to play as first. I'll probably let Pilgrim and stuff give me some advice on who he thinks I should do. Oh, we're getting lagged out here. I'm definitely going to give it a shot. You can post Patreon on your channel, so donations are there. I do have a Patreon posted, um, and there's some people who are still giving to it. Um, I used Patreon a number of years ago, and people had a great response to it, and it allowed me to get enough money to put together a really good computer system so that I could make better videos, and that's what I used the Patreon for. I didn't want it to just like go into paying me since I had a day job, but I used it um, because I can't just take all the money from my day job and spend it on computer parts, right? It's not fair to Mrs. Air or my boys or anything else, right? Um, so I used Patreon for that, but um, then MSI sponsored me as well, and I, I haven't pushed Patreon because I have a day job. I don't need you all to donate money to me. Um, if people do, it's very kind of them. Obviously, I'll put it to use for the channel, but I'm not actively asking for the donations because I, I don't need it. Like, I, I don't want to ask you all for money that I don't need. Like, I just, I don't feel right about it. Um, like I said, if people donate it, I'll take it. I'll find a way to put it to use on the channel. Um, and, and that'll be that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm not going to ever push Patreon hard. Um, because I, I just don't need it. If there gets a point to where I ever needed it, then sure. But, uh, yeah, I just, I don't feel right doing that. So it's still there. It's available if someone wants to use it, but that's why you don't see me like really like advertising it or, or pushing it or anything.
I should make a Little Air channel. <laughs> you know, if I'm still making videos by the time Little Air is old enough to, to get into this kind of thing, maybe we will. Maybe we'll uh, have him do it. I'll tell you one of my favorite things that's happened since I've had my YouTube channel is the Discord. <laughs> I had a few people telling me, Eric, hey, you should make a Discord. And I was like, why? Like, I, don't know, I never used Discord. I didn't think it'd be very interesting. And then Appius and um, Wicked and some other people helped put together a Discord for me. It has been fantastic. It's probably been one of my favorite things that's ever happened. I love the community. Obviously here, but I also love the community on my Discord. Like, it is awesome. I love getting to just drop in and chat and be able to post announcements and like get with people in there to voice chat and play games. Stuff like that. It is really cool. Like, and, you know, like, especially with the pandemic came through and everybody gets stuck at home, I think the Discord was probably that much more valuable to some people because it was probably your only social interaction whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, it's, I love the Discord community. It's fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite, like I said, probably one of my favorite things that's ever come along with the channel. So really appreciate Appius and Wicked and uh, Warner and X Clone and uh, Pratani, all, all the people who help keep the uh, the Discord running. And if I missed any names, I apologize. But all the folks over there who keep the Discord running, you know who you are. So thank you. People go there and play other games too. It's not always just Total War. Like I've seen them in there playing Vermintide and playing other games together and. Uh, like so there's there's a bunch of stuff going on It's fun uh, No, the discord doesn't cost any money Aaron the discord app is free You can join the discord for free And if you get too many notifications you can mute all that, and, you know, I, I don't take offense to it if you don't want to have notifications on with stuff. That's, that's totally fine. I had a couple of discords that were too active, and I had to, to mute <laughs> you know, notifications. So, yeah, we, 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 don't, we don't get offended by that. Because it can get busy sometimes with people chatting in, like, the general channel and stuff like that. We just like having people there. You can also mute specific text channels. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I do in most of my servers. Like, I keep, like, announcement channels open uh, if I need to hear stuff. Like, so, like, CA has a Discord where they talk to us, content creators. Like, so, obviously, I keep, like, I keep that announcement channel open for notifications. I have a Discord server that's, like, tracking PC parts inventory. I have a couple of those that I keep active. Um, on my own server, I think I keep it active when people ping my name. But um, I can't remember for sure whether I kept that one active. Like, there's just little stuff like that. So, yeah, I love the Discord. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. So Cyan Inferno is still ahead by a pretty, pretty wide margin. It's not quite 4,000 points, but... What's he got? He's still got some night gobos that are hidden. <laughs> the vampires are just like parked over chaos and chaos is like, come on down. <laughs> Let's play halberds. Oh man, the chill guys are still around too. Brutal. So are Varex Reavers. Yeah, I think the vampires are definitely getting last last vampire standing. <laughs> I don't think anybody's got a prayer of stopping the vampires from last man standing. I love these gobos hiding over here, though. This is great. I jumped in at a fun time. What'd you jump in on, Anthony? Welcome, by the way. Yeah, there's not a lot of points left. That's true. So the vampires can't pick up a ton of points, and there's only so much for Last Man Standing, so... That is true. Could be a problem. I don't think there's breath attacks left on the Terror guys, maybe, or else they'd be using it, surely. Probably. I don't know. Manfred can get a lot of winds of magic, so I wonder if he has enough to to charge up another, like, wind of... Oh, there was a breath attack. There it comes. Yeah, they got a couple hundred points off of it. 
Gabo says, this stinks. Yeah, <laughs> I love it when they say that. This stinks. Did the Gabos route? Yeah, they did. They routed. They gone. Oh, man. Now, I'll tell you what would be interesting. Is if these were, like, chosen with halberds. And they were, um... Immune to psychology. Now, that would be an interesting fight about to happen here. <laughs> Still not sure if they'd win it, but it'd be an interesting fight. Yeah, Nate, I'm going to have to go watch this replay. I was jabbering on the stream and probably didn't catch everything, but this it looked like a heck of a fight you all had going. The stream crashed on your end, Warner. Whoops. It hasn't crashed here, fortunately. It's actually the internet's been very stable. Oh boy, yeah, that's Mortis Engine being alive. Chaos is about to get their soul sucked right out of them. And then these uh, warriors are not immune to psychology. So they are about to get terror bombed hard. I love this though, it's like in combat. Now, now it finally says losing decisively, but there for a second it's like in combat, yeah, it's, it's even. <laughs> Skulls for the Skull Throne. Internet couldn't withstand the stream. <laughs> uh, should we do a sub-commander's battle? I think we should. Check out some of the stats from this thing first, though. Thanks for playing the, the game, guys. That was good. Give me a second to take a break and kind of chat to the stream while also getting to have some action in the background. I'll probably make a video out of this one. Um, not even 10k points before Last Man Standing. Yeah, Griffin. So Griffin did not win. And Cyan Inferno held on. There to the end. Griffin made a pretty close jump there. It's within a few hundred points. So I'll go check out that replay and probably make a video out of it. I think it'd make a good um, video. That wasn't a fart. I love the name there too. Let's see. Mirror guard. Poor Hell Cannon. Rest in pieces. They always go before it's their time. Dragon, Ilariel, it's a pretty good trick. Let's check out Griffin's troops here. Oh my goodness, Manfred. Woo! Wow, that's almost 5,000 damage value and 26,931. Wow, Manfred was on fire. Manfred was absolutely on fire. Wow. Protocol. Thank you so much for the five. He says, hey, I hope your night's going well. Finally got power back here in Austin, Texas and getting warm. Man, I'm so glad you got power back. Don't be giving me money. You need power and heat. Goodness sakes, I'm glad you're warm. And I've seen that probably a couple dozen people in Texas have died. That is awful. So hopefully everybody down there gets power back soon. I understand how cold it is because we got the same storm. It is miserable. I'd hate to imagine being without power I think it was minus 15 Fahrenheit here last night. Uh, fortunately for me, like I said, I have a propane fireplace and I had enough gas in the tanks to keep it running basically this whole time. So even if, had we lost power, I wouldn't have been in that bad a shape. But I mean, my goodness, like it has been cold. So yeah, it has been very cold. Very cold indeed. And the vampires got some work done on some of their units. So that was nice, Griffin. That was nice. Well done. Um, I'm going to go host a new one. Um, but yeah, I mean, for South Texas to be getting those kind of temperatures, that is nuts. Like, South Texas rarely gets that cold. In Dallas, our house got down to 43 degrees. Had the kiddos in four layers of clothes. Good grief. Yeah, that'd be miserable. That would be absolutely miserable. One thing you can do, if it ever gets into like a kind of like real survival type thing, is if you have like a small bathroom, um, tr if there's any comfortable way to do it, get get everybody in the house inside of there, close the door. Obviously you want to have some circulation, right? But, you know, close the door and light some candles and have all the people in there and then 
at least in that small room, you know, it will help to somewhat trap your body heat and the candles heat. Like, it won't be great, but it'll help rather than being in, like, you know, if you have a big open living room, you know, with, like, a higher ceiling or something like that. Obviously, you don't want to be in that. But, I mean, my goodness. And, yeah, carbon monoxide, you got to be careful. Like I said, I wouldn't get in a room that's, like, sealed. But you should be okay as long as there's still some airflow coming, you know, underneath the door and other stuff like that. But, yeah, do be careful because when you're burning stuff inside, you do have to be careful. Are you talking Fahrenheit or C for civilized people? <laughs> we don't use Celsius a lot in the U.S. I'm familiar with it, obviously, from my engineering degree, but uh, it was minus 15 Fahrenheit. And remember that zero Celsius is 32 Fahrenheit. Um, and, of course, 100 Celsius is 212 Fahrenheit. Like, so there's a couple of comparison points there, so... Yeah. So, for Arkansas, minus 15 Fahrenheit is very cold. Very cold. Like, it does not typically, like, it is pretty common for us to get freezing weather here, right? Every winter, you're going to get some freezing weather. And every winter, you're probably going to get a couple of snowstorms, stuff like that, right? That's all pretty common. What is very weird here is whenever it stays below freezing for more than, like, two or three days even in the daytime right it's very rare to have it stay below freezing so right now we've been below freezing probably getting close to two weeks straight and then minus 15 is absurd like there was ponds and stuff that were frozen and lakes that were starting to freeze it is extremely rare to see ponds and lakes start to freeze here because it just doesn't stay below freezing for long enough right um all it takes is one day you know, the sun coming out or something like that, and it, and it over, out does it. So it's just, it's very strange. Um, I have seen it get down. The coldest I ever saw since I've lived here in, in northwest Arkansas was minus 18 Fahrenheit. So a few degrees cooler than last night, but it was one night on a cold front, you know, that pulled back within a day or so. Um, and so for this weather, I think it was minus 7, and then minus 15, and then last night it was like 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Like, I mean, it, it was just blistering cold for several nights straight because you got to remember here the houses aren't like houses aren't built here with the idea of having to heat against that kind of cold um it, they're probably more built for the warm summer right and so we, we do have electric heaters because typically that's all you really need here because when it does get really cold you know, it costs you a little bit of money because the electric heater is not great, but, you know, it makes it through. And it's probably the same story in Texas. Fortunately for me, my house was built with that gas fireplace, and I have a secondary source of heating. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's, um, like, if you're in Canada, I'm assuming you all are prepared for that type of cold. And you know how to deal with it. Your home is built for it. You have plans for it every winter. Versus South Texas... It's normally like 50 degrees Fahrenheit this time of year, or maybe even warmer. And all of a sudden, you're getting hit with sub-zero temperatures. It's dangerous. They're just not ready for it. Yeah, I don't have a wood stove. Sometimes I wish I did. Yeah, everyone uses electric heaters. No wonder the power grid collapsed. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened. Um, that's exactly what happened. So, you end up with too much draw on the power grid. So, all right, let's do another battle. Uh, let's do a sub commanders. Uh, we'll do a three v three sub commanders battle. So, uh, game name is Airs Battle. Password is one. For those of you who don't know, and this may just be information you could really care less about, but I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here. An electric heater, uh, when I say electric heater, what most people have here is a heat pump. And it's, it's like your air conditioner, but running in reverse, right? And when you live in a place where the climate in the wintertime is relatively mild, like where I live, so let's say that your typical wintertime day is maybe 45 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And inside the house, you're just trying to make it up to 70. That's only a delta of, like, 
20, 25 degrees. And so basically your air conditioner just runs in reverse, right? An air conditioner always has a cold side and a hot side in the cycle. And you can use that in order to put hot air in rather than cold air. And so that's the way that our houses are usually heated here. And it's fairly energy efficient, all things considered, because you're only using the power to run a compressor and a fan, essentially, right? But whenever it gets really cold, so for instance, it was minus 15 here the other night, and I'm trying to take the temperature up to 70 degrees, that is a massive delta, right? It's like an 85 degree delta I'm trying to make. You just can't do that with the heat pump. It won't work. You cannot change it. And so what happens is they have a heating element. Like anybody who's had like a little electric space heater, you plug it in, there's a heating element. Or like your stove, an electric stove. The heating element heats up red hot, right? And that's what's inside your electric heater for an emergency. So that element heats up red hot and then air blows across it and takes that into the house. But of course, that is incredibly energy inefficient. It costs you a ton of money and it uses a ton of electricity. And that's why it's only there for an emergency. Well, imagine everybody's house on the power grid suddenly turns on those elements. Boom. You know, so that's the power draw. Just to like explain that, you know, for folks like what's happening. So yeah, anyway. Been a long time since I was in a thermodynamics class and was really close to any of these refrigeration cycles, but I still have a basic comprehension of how it works. So yeah, anyway. Alright, I gotta pick a faction here and shut my trap. I've been talking a lot tonight, but I guess I just like jabbering with you all on stream. Who do I want to be? Um... I haven't been green skins in a long time. Let's be some green skins. Yeah, I'll turn on unit caps as well. There we go. Oh, we got a lot of lag in this one. It's a major lag. I just typed something in chat and I still haven't seen it pop up in the chat. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, this game's not gonna work. Like, I can't even get a message to come across the chat, so it's it's gonna lag out. I'm gonna re-host the game. If that helps. So if, if you all were just in the battle, I apologize. I'm not trying to kick everybody out. I'm going to re-host the game um, and see if the lag will go away. But it was completely frozen with lag. Air is battle. Password is one. So let's try it again here. Um, I'm going to turn the unit cast back on. Open the game up to more people. Let's try it again. Yeah, the game was lagged really hard, so I'm going to rehost it, see if it'll help. I wish I had some geothermal energy here, that'd be awesome. <laughs> you live in a place where you can take advantage of that, that's a pretty slick power source. I'll tell you something that would be really neat. That I've always wanted to do. I don't know how practical it is, but if you all have a chance, go onto Google and go Google Stirling Engine. S-T-I-R-L-I-N-G. Like Stirling Engine. And it's a really interesting little um, external combustion engine. Yeah, so not, not to be confused with the internal combustion engine. It's an external combustion engine. And um, basically you just need a heat source and a heat sink. And you can run a piston on this sealed cylinder with the gas inside. And you can use it to run like a flywheel um, in order to transfer the energy and stuff. But I've always thought it'd be really neat to have a wood, like a wood stove. And have that provide the heat to the Stirling engine. And then have the cold side of the Stirling engine be outside. And let's say it's the winter time and an ice storm comes and knocks out your power. Um... You can... Oh, we do need to turn off unit caps for sub-commander. Good point. Um, it'd be really cool to um, to have that Sterling engine set up 
you know, with like your wood stove. And so you could actually generate some electricity while you're also keeping your house warm. So it'd be pretty cool to see. I don't, I don't know how feasible it is. is it, you know, I guess it depends on how much electricity you get for the amount of power and stuff you put into it, but it'd be pretty neat. Uh, we've got a couple open spots if anybody wants to join. We are lagged out again. I can't get a message to come through in the chat. I don't know what's going on. Something's wrong with the servers. Um, it's like completely frozen. Can't see the lobby to join. I'm going to restart the game. See if that helps. Um, I'll restart the game real quick. Aaron says, just got on the Discord. Thanks for the help. Well, glad to have you, Aaron. Thanks for joining. You ever need anything, just ping people in there. The moderators do a good job. Other people are usually willing to help out. So, yeah, I'm going to restart the game, and we'll see if that helps. If you were having, uh, if you were in that game, you might want to restart it as well. We can't see his faction rune looter. Yeah, everybody who was there, just uh, try and restart it. Look at my army blocker up over here. All right. Battles, multiplayer battle, host. All right, airs battle, password is one. If we can't get this to work, I'll just play something else for a little while before the, uh, the end of the stream. Tis the nature of being live. Things go wrong. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. I've been... Talking a lot. Thanks for staying and listening and not just immediately vacating. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to Vermintide Pilgrim. Should be fun. Alright, the game is up. Uh, game name is Heirs Battle. Password is 1. Try and join up. If it doesn't work, um, I got an idea for something else fun I could do here at the end of the stream. Like if we can't get enough people to join or people can't see the, the battle for some reason, still can't see it. That's weird, Calvin. I don't know what's going on. All right, well, looks like we're having problems with people being able to join, so I really don't know what's going on. It's really strange. We don't usually have this problem. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, let's bounce over. And just to keep things kind of in the Total War neighborhood, I'll just uh, play a little bit of that Satsuma campaign that I started the other day, but I went back to it and redid it right, and I'm a little further into the game and have a bunch of fun units. So let's bounce over to that and play that for a few minutes um, just to kind of have something to do here for the end of the stream. I won't be on here a whole lot longer, but I, I do want to stay here. Uh, I would, I could play Age of Empires, but let, let's go, uh, let's bounce it. Let's keep it on Total War for now. Um, maybe another time. I, I do want to hit some Age of Empires 3 on the stream sometime because I really do like it a lot. Um, I've been playing a lot of Skirmish against the AI just to kind of practice and figure out different card decks and strategies and stuff. It's been a lot of fun. They actually improved the AI a whole lot in some of the recent updates. It's much more fun to play since they made some of those updates. So let's see. Shogun 2. Are we in? We're in. Yeah. Come on, OBS. You can do it. There it goes. All right. Let's load our campaign. All right, so late September of 1870 with Shimazu... Whatever his name is. I can't remember the rest. <laughs> I play Age of Empires 3 too. Awesome, Pilgrim. Yeah, hey, I'll tell you what would be fun then is if we have a couple of Age of Empires 3 matches on a stream one night too. I think it'd be fun to play some FFA and Age of Empires and then also um, 
just do some team battles. Like some treaty battles, you know, where you do like a 20 minute treaty and then fight, or a 30 minute treaty and fight, one of the two, that'd be fun. I'm not like spectacularly good at Age of Empires 3. It's probably a lot like Total War, right? Like I can play the game decent, but I'm certainly not like at like a competitive level of play. Um, so yeah. Okay, so let me explain to you all what happened. So the last time we played the Satsuma campaign, I botched it and we were losing it basically by the end, right? And so I restarted on my own time and I made a video and showed you all on my channel like what I had to do to do things right. So from that point, um, I was able to strike out with my allies. So we're allied with the Harado. They are a big ally. And then the Tosa are also a big ally. Um, so Harado, Tosa, Saga, um, and then these folks over here. I can't pronounce that one, but those are our allies, all the Imperial allies, and we've been pushing against the Shogunate. I'm in a war against the Jozai and the Odwara and uh, whoever this is up here, Sendai. So we've made a lot of progress. Tosa has probably the most provinces right now, but I have an absolutely vicious army that you all are going to like. You guys ready for this? Check this army out. Three Armstrong guns, six Black Bears, three Imperial Imp, three United States Marines. I've yet to replace the Saber Cavalry with Carbine Cavalry, but I'm about to do that. And then I've got Shimazu uh, Tadayoshi. Um, but yeah, the three Armstrong guns are getting me like almost 500 kills each in battle. And then the U.S. Marines and Imperial Infantry is just brutal. <laughs> like, look at the stats on these U.S. Marines. <laughs> They're absolutely obscene. 33 charge bonus. 24 morale. Yeah, it's disgusting. Like, uh, oh, it's great. Then the Armstrong guns have been fantastic as well. Uh, I actually, that's really my main army that I've been messing with. I have another army back here that's just kind of leftover trash that I really haven't been using. I need to make another army. But it's got a couple of parrot guns and some line infantry. But honestly, I haven't even needed it because my, my one army up here is so OP. That, I mean, we haven't even begun to get kind of messed up <laughs> by any of that stuff. With pleasure, sir. Um, I do have a couple of navies. They're both pretty small. I have this navy here with some torpedo boats. I love the torpedo boats. And I got me a, a Kotetsu ironclad. And then I just have an old wooden corvette here that's basically like a cannon bait. Um, so I love me some torpedo boats, folks. If you all ever want to get air present, just, just get him a torpedo boat. Speaking of, I'm a little sad because there's nothing for my torpedo boats to torpedo. Um, we were getting little raids frequently, but I've run out of things to torpedo, and I may go steaming off to try and find some torpedo victims. So, I think we'll do that. I have one other navy. Um, oh, uh, Gatling guns are coming soon. To a campaign near you, by the way. Um, I have Gatling Towers in multiple settlements. Um, I've got Gatling Towers. See, like here, they're almost finished. Uh, we've got them in etches, and I unfortunately have not been counterattacked by anybody where I've gotten to use the Gatling Towers, so hopefully it'll happen. Up here in this navy, I have some, uh, I have a copper, a couple of copper-plated frigates, um, a Kasuga, uh, actually two Kasugas, and then I have a uh, Kanran Maru that I just captured from someone that I, I use as cannon bait as well. But uh, this has a, been a pretty good little navy for me. Um, let's see, late September... I think... Yeah, and I, you know what would be fun? Let's check out my taxes. I should try and make a rebellion in a place that has Gatling Towers. Yeah, like right here, there's Gatling Towers. Let's, um, let's turn the taxes on here. Yes, yes, let's make a rebellion so we can see the Gatling Towers in, in action. Um, and speaking of Gatling guns, I need to build the right building to get them. Right, so there's the Tosa. Like I said, they've been a powerful ally and a good one. 
I love the Gatling guns in this game. I, I hate that CA never really got the Gatling guns functioning right, in my opinion. Like, the Gatling guns always aim at, like, the very edge of a unit formation rather than just kind of aiming in the middle. But they're still very fun to use. And they're really fun to shoot manually as well. Oh no, there's unrest. However, we're we gonna defend ourselves. <laughs> So here we go. The people are going to rebel against a citadel with Gatling towers and a decent garrison. So I'm very much looking forward to this. Hopefully the rebellion doesn't just sit around and raid all my ports, by the way, and like, actually they'll come fight us. That, that would be awful lot of fun. After workshops, gunsmiths. Ooh, a gunsmith? Plus 20 to the accuracy? Oh, hold the phones, hold the phones. Whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. I didn't realize we had a gunsmith here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, cancel this building. Yeah, you've been canceled. You're canceled. We're going to build some military recruitment here, and we're going to build this gunsmith. And, uh, oh, boy, yeah, that's going to be fun. This is going to be fun. All right, now we're talking. Now we're talking. This is the kind of atrocities that I can be into. A plus 20 accuracy on recruitment. My U.S. Marines can get even more OP if we have to recruit them. Balthasar would, would approve of these armies. All right, let's see. Okay, there's some Odwara fleets there. A geisha increases in rank. Oh, good, a samurai revolt. Perfect. Poor samurai. Uh, painting nobles. I'm using my geisha to kind of boost my settlements. So I'm using geisha to boost the income in key settlements. At least I, I feel like they're useful for that. Um, let's head back up here. Yeah, yeah, we're going to build a cadet school and an artillery. Our cannon range. Let's bombard these chatterheads again. And... I need... We're building here a castle yet. I'm gonna have very little levy. Let's go. Let's go check out that samurai rebellion. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, send them on up. Send them on up. I wonder if they'll be too scared to attack me because I have all this levy infantry here. Look, I'll make it juicier. I'll, I'll send away some of the levy infantry. Just come attack. You can do it. Come attack, Azumo. Um. Is this leaked Nippon gameplay? Uh, yes, this is leaked Nippon footage from Warhammer 3 for anybody who's wanting to go start spreading that information. <laughs> Air would never lead you astray with, with untrue statements like that. Air, why don't you do stuff with Apollo? I have done stuff with them once. Uh, we played a Three Kingdoms campaign together for a few episodes. It's just really hard for me to do um, cooperative content because my window of recording these and doing these is like pretty late so like for Apollo it'd probably be like 9 p.m. his time before I could like get with him to do it so it's just really difficult but I love Apollo he's a fun guy um, makes some fun content he's, he's a lot of he's great um, I've loved getting to do stuff with him when I have Shameful display! Sorry, we just had to throw that in there. Um, <laughs> we, just, we just needed some shameful display. Who doesn't need some shameful display in their life? But yeah, I, I know Apollo didn't really love Three Kingdoms, and I know he doesn't like Warhammer. Um, so there's there's also probably not a whole lot of game. I mean, I, I'd play like Rome 2 or something with him if he wanted to. Um, but I feel like that 
you know, he and I are also kind of playing different games at the moment. I don't know if that makes it less appealing, you know, to him or anything like that to you. Whether it makes sense, but yeah, he's he's great. Definitely like Apollo. I wish you get a traditional dojo. I don't have a traditional dojo anywhere in the Empire at this point. Um, this place is just going to revolt if I walk out. But we could uh, murder the rebellion, so rebel scum. We should put a uh, foreign veteran here to help with recruitment as well. Alright, there we go. I am in the central time zone in the U.S. We should discuss matters of mutual. So they want me to join the war against the so profit and flourish. Nagashima, and they will join the war against the Sato. But let's see. So I got Hirado and Tosa. They're a trade partner of mine, though. I don't want to betray my trade partner. I'm good. I can handle myself against the Sato. Have you seen my army? Like, I'm not really worried about the Sato. Like, I'm, I'm feeling pretty safe. We need a campaign for heir, wife, and heir. Can't tell her anything. Uh, no, I am planning a campaign with Mrs. Heir. We're, we're going to be doing it um, probably starting sometime in the next couple of weeks on Warhammer 2. I've been getting some things ready, and I think we're pretty much ready to go. Here we go. We get to use our, um, our Gatling Towers. Oh, I'm so excited to see the Gatling Towers go. Those says Daimyo's got a nice wig. He does, Warner. That Red Bear wig. It looks good. I need one of those, too. I definitely need one of those, too. Alright, let's see here. Senshi, are you still like the... The Bill Gates of Salt Pennies. Gatling Tower. Gatling Tower, Gatling Tower. Alright, so we got a Gatling Tower on all approaches. <laughs> Doesn't have a huge range, but yeah, it's got a decent little range there. This ought to be good. This ought to be good. I'm looking forward to this very much. We are ready to defend, sir! This poor spear levy. They're like, yeah, rebel against air. He's a terrible leader. <laughs> they come to the castle. They're like, man, we gotta walk all the way up this hill. <laughs> Does it actually have a Gatling gun poking out? Good, good question, Warner. Uh, no, apparently it's just. Maybe we'll see one get pushed out the front door or something. I mean, maybe is that what these little like flaps are right here? Yeah, I mean, I can see like flaps up here. The Gatling flaps. Let's fast forward so we can get some Gatling action. Oh, you know what though? We should probably not allow the enemy to capture said Gatling tower. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a unit down here. Make sure they, they can't just capture it. Let's get a few units into positions around these Gatling towers because that would be bad. Let the enemy capture the Gatling tower. That would be very bad. Don't have any coming from that direction. It'd be safe. 4 DHS, Yeah, I know. It's like I'm sitting here watching the Gatling guns shoot. Then they step up and capture it and the Gatling guns get turned against us. No, no, no. Come to the Gatling guns. Over here. Get. get over here. Run, you pathetic fools. All right. Are they going to step into the tower somewhere? So over here, they may try and dodge it. Oh, no! Gatling action! Call that a Gatling gun? Faster! Crank it! Wow, that's some very nice, like lighting glitches going on there. That is not a Gatling gun. Look at this! I only killed seven of them. What? It, I didn't pay 8,000 for that. 
I want some murderous atrocity. I'm disappointed. Like, sorely disappointed. These are some of the most disappointing Gatling guns that one could ever imagine. I mean, we're finally getting a few kills. Faster firing. Fire faster, you lazy turds. Guys, just avoiding the Gatling gun. That's probably pretty smart. Alright, we finally got a few kills on the Gatling gun. Like, maybe worth it. Okay, okay, the Gatling gun's kind of paying off a little now. Like, it's finally getting enough kills to make me happy. I, my disappointment is immeasurable too, Warner. I'm extremely disappointed. And look at my guys not even firing at these spears running straight towards them. Like, I had to give them the order. I mean, come on, man. We don't give you a gun to not shoot the enemy. My line infantry has suppression fire and kneel fire as well. Um, can I move? It's the only ten kills. Like, I mean, I I expect a lot more out of my Gatling guns. You know, I didn't I didn't buy subpar Gatling guns. They cost me eight thousand. I expect like murderous atrocity level Gatling guns. I mean, they're pretty good. Don't get me wrong. Like, it, it's pretty good. It's okay. But, but I am a little disappointed. Gatling gun, 1995, plus shipping and handling. Yeah, this feels like a Wiley e. Coyote Gatling gun, you know? It's not bad. It's not bad, but expect a little better. Oh, this poor, ill-thought-out samurai revolt. You guys should be owning. What is your deal? Like, this is a target-rich environment. Look at these guys. The like, enemy tower is yours, General. Uh, the enemy tower was never theirs, so sure. The enemy tower that was never theirs is now mine. Oh crap, they're gonna capture a Gatling tower. Eh, sucks to be them though, I can just back up where they can't do anything about it. Okay. Where are these guys gonna climb the walls at? Go shoot these guys while they're trying to capture the Gatling tower. Well, those reports are highly exaggerated. You have triumphed over the enemy. Indeed, I have, my Kentucky Fried Advisor. The Samurai Revolt was a uh, very ill thought out. How are these guys not chain routed? Does the AI seriously think that there's like still a fight to be had? Maybe it's because they took my Gatling tower. There we go. Alright, well, Gatling tower, definitely a much better defense weapon than archery or matchlock towers. I wouldn't say that it's as impressive as an actual, like, Gatling artillery piece on a flat battle, but, um, you know, I'll take it. It's still very fun. It's still very fun. But what, how would you all rate those Gatling towers on a scale of 0 to 10? 0 being 
that it was a child's rubber band gun, and 10 that it was like a repeating nuclear weapon machine gun, okay? I'm gonna give him like a four. Walmart of 10, <laughs> six of 10, man. Yeah, I know, they weren't that good. They should have been better. <laughs> Ooh, more mounting unrest? Sounds like fun. We like ourselves some mounting unrest. What is three square? What's he talking about? It says you there. Do you want three squares a day? Is that like three square meals? Is that like a recruiting pitch? Is there anybody British enough to explain that to me? Obviously, I can understand it when I hear the Kentucky advisor talking, but when, when the British guy goes off, it's just like a foreign language to me. Okay, three squares is the three meals. All right, I get it. <laughs> All right, so we are building the gunsmith. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and build the dry dock here too. Might as well, because we got a crap load of cash at the moment. Um, and crap load is a scientific measurement of cash as well, by the way, folks. Oh, sweet, we got some targets up here. Moving Move in the fleet. I love the torpedo boats. Oh, I hope I get to torpedo something. Love some torpedo boats. Tosa, come on, man. You're chasing off my torpedo targets. But being so zealous. Let's go home, take a break. Oh, don't go around me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good choice, Josiah. Good choice. Ooh, another Samurai Revolt. Excellent. Excellent. Can we get far enough up here to actually lay the ambush? Oh. We actually got to lay the ambush. I think he's just sitting on his butt because he didn't have enough movement points. Um, let's keep bombarding that province. Let's head over here. Where was my Josai victims? There we go. What's up? <laughs> Pleasure to meet you here on these unfriendly high seas. Oh, it is it's a very damaged Conran Maru. <laughs> all right, well, I don't even know if I'll get to torpedo it. And then watch it be my luck that he'll, like, blow up all of my torpedo boats before I can get a shot. Oh, well, I'm risking it. I'm going for it. Never played the Fall of the Samurai, but torpedo boats might make me change my mind. Michael, when you get a torpedo hit, it, make, it, it makes everything worth it. When you, when you see those torpedoes impact the hull and that beautiful Shogun 2 explosion, um, you just, it's hard to beat. It is beautiful. All right. Obviously, we got our Kotetsu, which could easily sink this thing. Um, but I'm going to turn Fire at Will off. I'm going to put us onto an explosive shell. I'm going to get my torpedo boats and ready to go. Actually, I'm going to use this... Um, I'm going to use this Chitin to just go take some shots. I'm going to turn the Fire at Will off. And I'm going to let the kite and take the hits just to get my torpedo boats into range. The men are ready to attack, sir. I really don't care about the kite and corvette here. Let's fast forward because AI is going to be just sitting on their butt all the way in the back. They will eventually move. I've noticed that with torpedo boats, the AI will move um, because they know if they just sit there, you're going to torpedo them. But um, they will sit on their butt for a considerable amount of time. No risk it, no biscuit. Torpedo hits are dopamine inducing. They are. Warner, they're so good. Especially considering that this is like a 10 year old game. This game is very old. I 
it still looks absolutely beautiful when you score a good torpedo hit. The naval battles in Fall of the Samurai are actually really pretty. They are really pretty. They're a little slow paced sometimes with how far you have to travel across a map and, you know, like all that kind of stuff. A little slow paced, but they are pretty. There's no doubt about it. They look good. And they are fun. Especially like when you're kind of playing and then just randomly all of a sudden your ship explodes, you know, it's like... Sir, I feel your general has been exploded into a thousand pieces, sir. Oh, you get all that stuff. Oh, no, hey, hey, no, quit it. My torpedo boat, you butt. Alright, full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Okay, he's firing at the chitin now, good. I'll stop and bring her around a little this way. Let's get my torpedo boats on the run. Get close. I, I'm, we're going to score a hit here. See, if he's firing at the kite, and this is good, because then my, my torpedo boats won't take the hits. Because they really can't take much of a beating. Normally what I would do is engage with my kotetsu, just to kind of soften a target up and keep him busy. But um, at this point, obviously, the kotetsu would probably kill this Kondran Maru before my torpedo boats ever got to uh, take action. We gotta aim up in front of him a little. I'm gonna, I'm gonna loose the torpedoes. I'm gonna get this one to go this direction in case we have to fire behind him. I'm gonna go ahead and put some torpedoes on this, like right in front of this boat. Kind of hopefully force him to turn. So torpedoes in the water. We got torpedoes in the water, folks. Okay, we're gonna kind of just bracket this guy in. I think he's gonna dodge those ones. I'm gonna put a couple more in the water right here, and if he makes a turn, I'll have this boat behind him. Full full steam. Full. All ahead, full. Oh, this might be a hit. Oh, I think we're just going to barely miss. No, 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 it's going to score. We're in business. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, that almost brings tears to my eyes. That is so good. Oh. That right there is why you torpedo boat. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. See, it's just, it's not the same if your foe doesn't go down in a massive, you know, flaming, high explosive blast. That is how you do a naval battle right there. Torpedoes. I've actually thought it'd be kind of fun to like maybe do some multiplayer battles on here where it's like everybody has to bring all torpedo boats. <laughs> just have that as a game type. Just call it torpedo run or something like that it just everybody nothing but torpedo boats turn the cannons off and it's that's it just torpedoes <laughs> now i'll tell you what would also be fun they probably wouldn't have ever allowed you know just just for the sake of like if someone could mod in like a modern american missile cruiser that would also lead to some great entertainment. I would be down for that. Wait, we got another revolt here. Are you going to play Warhammer 2? Uh, the title's misleading. I had played it earlier, Rothgar. We were doing battles in Warhammer 2. And um, the servers started screwing up on us. People couldn't see the game. We were getting lagged out. So rather than get stuck trying to get battles that wouldn't work, we just jumped over here and started playing this campaign. All right, here we go. Um, let's see. I don't know which direction they're coming from yet, but obviously we want to protect the Gatling Towers. Put some lion and levy and some spear levy here. Spear levy. 
Typically speaking, if you're gonna fight like an overwhelming foe. Actually, that one's pretty easy to get to. Let's just let's do that. Let's do that for now. Now I'll just kinda get everybody ready to kind of spread out. Here we go. Here we go. Alright. Today, sir, we defend! We do have some attackers coming from this direction. It is nothing with guns as of yet. Spear levy from over here so far. Let's block off that approach. We've got hostiles inbound from this direction. I'm gonna go meet them with some guns. On top. Levy garrison infantry, so that'll be fine. Let's put those guns there. No one coming from that direction, and then we've got hostiles inbound. This side, so let's take this spear levy to hold. And let's take this garrison infantry down here as well. Alright, there we go. Get our Gatling guns to warm up and start firing faster here. Warm it up, boys! I mean, they need to... The guys working these Gatling guns need to do some arm exercise. Like, I want to see that thing cranking. It wants to be like a saw or an M60. Or, or, that's the same thing. You all know what I mean. M249. I, whatever. It needs to be cooking. The Gatling Towers are definitely good. Like, they don't blow me away, but they're good. They certainly get a lot of killing done. Like, more so than the other towers did. That's a fair statement. Nothing else to shoot out here, so I'm just gonna reposition this infantry. Something like this, maybe? Some nice shots from up here by that Levy Garrison Infantry. Alright, Gatling Tower, let's get some extra shooting done. Poor Matchlock Kachi. Relic of a bygone age. So this infantry down here should be able to get some work done. So I think we're... Whoa! Accidentally clicked out of the game. My bad. Alright, there we go. Um, these poor matchlock Kachi. They're gonna get absolutely hosed. I mean, I see more windows right here. I see this one. Why is this one not firing? More guns. I mean, I can stall extra. The men have taken an enemy tower. That tower was never in enemy control, Mr. Eleven Herbs and Spices advisor. You get your story straight. going to pull back from this position on the wall and take up a gun position here. And we have fought off enemies for the most part over here. Let's... Yeah, our tower getting good shots in right now. And the matchlock Kachi not going to be able to get the job done over here. Yeah, this, this, uh... Rebellion's not... Sure. Not going so well. Your general is in mortal peril, sir. Well, he probably is. Remember to stretch your lines when deploying them on the walls? Yeah, yeah. You certainly can get more people shooting. Yeah, like right here. Stretch these guys out. triumphed over the enemy shoot him I need 
Lay down the suppression fire. Bayonets! Or katanas, you know, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Katana works. Looks like it went pretty good for my enemies over Their here. Seems fallen. about right. Their general has fallen. Good point. Send in the longbow Apaches? Yeah, that would work too. <laughs> I'd take a couple of H64Ds here. Some 70 millimeter rockets, 30 millimeter chain gun. What's the uh, missiles? Is it the AGM? Is it the 165s, whatever the Hellfire missiles that they carry? Man, that'd be sweet to ever get to ride an Apache. <laughs> that would be awesome. What? More mounting unrest? Uh-oh. Whatever shall we do? Pretty soon there won't be anybody left to, uh, to hold any unrest. So... I guess I could, uh, I don't know, we don't need this garrison anyway. We'll just keep AC-130. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun, too. Alright. I want to have one battle with my main army. So you all get to see... Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. This is almost a waste of ammunition, but, um... Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever done a competitive campaign? Uh, like a head-to-head? -head? No. I haven't. I haven't really felt the desire, honestly. It would take so long. And it may be fun, but then, like... I'm gonna be honest. Like, if I was trying to win a campaign against someone, there are so many ways that you could be a massive butthole. <laughs> like, I just... I worry that's what it would turn into. Is, like, each player just trying to make life miserable for each other. And, like... It makes me wonder whether I would even enjoy the campaign, if that's the case. I don't know. So, like, there's some places where I don't want multiplayer. I like the multiplayer battles, but, like, when I'm going to sit down and have fun with the campaign, it's like, I, I don't really want another human there, unless it was, like, co-op or something. Because, you know, I don't feel like competing when I sit down in that environment, if that makes sense, right? I just, just want to play the game. Um, so I guess it depends on, you know, who you are and what you enjoy from the game on whether or not that would fit it. But I've never tried it as far as, like, the head-to-head -head campaigns go. Um, there are Armstrong guns ready to go. Need to move up just a hair when the battle starts. I need to get Carbine Cavalry instead of the Sabres. But the Sabres aren't bad, um, just like as a support. They're, they're really not bad. I don't really have to worry about keeping my general way back, because there's not going to be a lot of stray bullets coming his way in this fight. The men are ready to attack, sir. I love the Marines. Semper Fidelis, sir. <laughs> so good. I think my Armstrong guns will basically be in range. Even though it might put me in range of their wooden cannons, I'm gonna move up and get on this hill. And uh, just try and take a better position against the uh, enemy. Even though position's really not gonna matter a whole lot in this fight. Like, this fight is kind of an auto win. Yeah, their wooden cannons are in range, so I'm sure my Armstrong guns are in range. Let's unlimber. I wonder if my U.S. Marines ever thought they would get shot at by a medieval Japanese take on a European cannon. Alright, I'm gonna go into kill zone. Shrapnel shot! Here it comes, folks. 
Let it rip. Oh yeah. <laughs> Get some good old shrapnel shot. Woo! Alright, the Marines are in position. Neil fire. Defensive. Then you units lay down the suppression fire. Suppress. You have triumphed over the enemy! Yes, we have. Oh wow, they actually got a Yari key through here into my US Marines. I don't think it's gonna do them a lot of good, but. Zipper fire, Marines! Send these samurai back to the Sengoku Jedi. My black bears over here. These guys don't really have very good position. They might still get some shots off my Imperial Infantry. I love how the samurai want to get into melee with my marines, but yeah, they, they really don't want to be in melee with these marines. <laughs> this is not the melee target you were looking for. This game looks so good. Look how good that looks. Dang, man. Ten years old. Other than like a few flickering shadows and lights and stuff. Like, I mean, this game looks good. Alrighty, folks. Um, that is going to be about all the time I have to stream tonight. Sorry we didn't get more Warhammer streaming in. Um, but, you know, hey, we got to have some fun, nonetheless. So I will be taking off for tonight. I will be back tomorrow night. Um, and we will try and do... I don't know what we're going to stream tomorrow night, honestly. I'll figure it out. Um, we'll stream something tomorrow night. Maybe we'll... Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll uh, chat with some folks on the Discord if I need to put up a poll somewhere or do something like that. And we'll, we'll have another stream tomorrow. Have some fun. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And I uh, appreciate... Uh, all of you who are enjoying this, I look forward to doing more with you. So, uh, Air of Carthage signing up for now, and I will see you all next time.